Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review, and it's been a very hot minute since I've actually sat down in front of a camera and uh, did a review because I've had a lot of older content and a lot of audio based content that's been going on as of late. But I have a couple reviews I would like to record so I can get them out of the way for my top 10 lists that are going to be at the end of this year. Be sure to keep an eye out for that. Now it's time to move on to the first of three reviews that I'll be having coming out for the next couple weeks. This review is going to be about Gremlins 2, the new batch. Now, I originally had this whole review recorded, done and over with, about a month ago. But my microphone wasn't on and it didn't record any audio. Got all the video, but no audio. So here we go again. Critics rate this film a 7.1 out of 10. While audiences rate this film a 5.7 out of 10. The budget of this film ranged around 30 to 50 million dollars. The box office back 41.5 million dollars. So, not as big as a uh, draw as the first one did, but if it was in the 30 million range, they kind of got it, but if it was in the 50, then it kind of... Some uh, comments that I'd like to um, talk about the film, uh, there's uh, twin uh, doctors in this film that are also played in the Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Christopher Lee also makes an appearance in this film as well. I always noticed, noticed that out of all the uh, gremlins and the uh, mogwai, the uh, gizmo, for some reason, is always the calm one. Is always the one that's always staying out of trouble and is always like the quote-unquote perfect one. As one of the mogwais evolved into uh, uh, a gremlin, it kind of resembled the creature from the Black Lagoon. And uh, at the very end, one gremlin survived the entire uh, sun attack, which that kind of leaves it up to question, like, what happens to that one gremlin? Does it get taken out by the government? Does it get taken in for uh, science studies and everything? No one really knows. And it's the one that had the uh, sex change. I don't know if that's because it chose to be a woman, or if it's one of the, the uh, chemical science incidents gone wrong, one or the other, because they're not really categorized as male or female, except for that one that ended up being a female at the end of the film. There were some connections in the film, uh, going into my pros. Uh, some connections with the first one. Uh, there's an antique store with the owner and everything. Uh, Gizmo, obviously, and then Billy and his girlfriend uh, also had reprised their roles in this film. There's also uh, confusion that uh, the uh, tractor driver was also in this film. I thought he actually died in the original film. But I guess he also returned as well, so that adds on to the uh, reprising characters. Everything else was pretty much brand new. I also found it interesting in this film that uh, this version of the Mogwai that had reproduced from Gizmo actually had different fur color, which that kind of adds more to the mythos of the Mogwai. In this one, the Gremlins seemed a little bit more demonic looking, and they vocalized a little bit more, especially the one that drank the chemical juice that made him very smart and everything. I think they were trying to make them look more scary and more menacing in this film, even though there was a very uh, comedic undertone that kind of overcasted the entire film. The puppetry and the stop motion had returned this film as well. That was another thing I really liked about the first one. And now this one is the use, the use of puppetry in stop motion. And I also heard that when while they are in the works, or I guess in the talks of making a third Gremlins film that's been, I guess, talks for like for years and years and years and years, that they will continue to use puppetry in stop motion to keep with the uh, theme and I guess the uh, nostalgia of the Gremlins movies. Con-wise, uh, the WB intro in the very beginning, like, it was kind of funny, but it felt very unnecessary, kind of just put in there, and kind of felt like it took up a lot of time. I mentioned it earlier about Murray, the tractor driver, that's his actual name, uh, how I thought that he had actually died in the first film, but apparently he didn't, and his wife didn't either, so I just was kind of like, I guess it, he survived, I guess. It is also very confusing how the uh, film acknowledges the first film events as like it actually happened but at the same time it was also a movie in the actual universe so did somebody do like a fucking um, found footage kind of version of it which it would make sense because there was third person shots in the entire film in the film that they were showing that it was a movie even though they acknowledged it as 
it happened before and it's a movie. The pacing of this film was very bipolar. Like, it would be very fast-paced and very um, action-based and a little bit of horror here and there, and then it would kind of slow down with some storytelling. A lot of unnecessary bullshit and a lot of unnecessary comedy, I feel like. Um, There's another random trauma story about mentioning Abraham Lincoln that kind of got thrown right in the middle of the film. And I didn't, it was just kind of like, it happened right after they uh, killed off one of the bad gremlins and it just like threw the whole pace off the film and everything. I mean, even the fact that like they portrayed this film as a movie being played at the theaters, being uh, controlled by gremlins in the uh, uh, film booth. So it's just, it, so many universe breaking bullshit and pacing was just, it hurt my brain a lot. And the electric gremlin that got turned into basically a lightning bolt uh, would have survived the initial um, mass uh, murder of all the gremlins because he's just a bolt of electricity. Yeah, he hit the water, but he would still be in the air. So technically two gremlins would survive, but that's just what I think. All in all, uh, this film was very, very all over the place. It hurt my brain watching it. It was enjoyable at the good parts, and it was very painful to watch in the very bad parts. I didn't completely hate this film. I hated moments in this film, but I didn't completely hate the film because uh, it, it did do its job in pulling me back into the movie and making sure that I am still paying attention to what's going on, even though it took its sweet time to get to those points. So I'm going to give this film a 6.8 out of 10. I feel like that's a kind of a solid number for this film. Just not cracking 7 yet, but there's enough... I guess you can say there's enough good in there to keep it above a 5 and a 6. On that note, hopefully you guys did enjoy this review. Um, if you did, be sure to like, share, subscribe, join the madness. There are social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We also have a Discord uh, channel. The link is in the description down below for all those social medias. We also just started a podcast on Spotify. That is the Mike Checked Podcast. Be sure to go to your Spotify and look up Mike Checked. The link for that is also in the description box with all the social medias and the Discord link in the box down below. But this is Mike Check 95 with the Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. Signing out.